Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and I just came out with a Sonoma 14.1 update video, and I went over Open Core Legacy Patcher with my 2013 Mac Pro, and everything went fine. But for some Open Core Legacy Patcher users, the 14.1 update is causing issues, and I recommend holding off and not installing 14.1 on your unsupported Mac until some of these issues can be cleared up. Now, my Mac Pro is connected to a Ethernet connection, and it could be having to do with something with the KDK and and the Wi-Fi. So we're gonna investigate here to see what's going on. Plus, if you are in a situation where you have a black screen, like this MacBook Pro here from 2017, if you click boot here and you click on Sonoma, it'll just be a black screen and it won't boot. So what I'm gonna show you is how to rescue the machine from this situation. And as you can see in the screen recording, nothing is happening, we can't do anything. We've got a black screen. Uh, some users are reporting a stuck progress bar around 40 to 25%. What we have to do is we have to revert the root patches. So what we're gonna do with this unit here is we're gonna power down and we're gonna boot up into recovery. So I'm powering down here. Okay, we're off. I'm gonna power back on and I'm gonna hold down the option key. There's a chime. The main goal here is that if you're either at a stuck progress bar or if it's trying to log in and can't, or if it's at a black screen, we wanna be able to try to revert the root patches to get back to a state where we can at least get the system to boot up into the operating system so we can maybe copy files off or we can attempt to repair later. So step one to be able to do that is to click on EFI boot here. And on the next screen, you'll click the Mac OS Sonoma or Macintosh hard drive. You'll hold down the shift key first and then hit enter. The Mac should boot up into safe mode and you should be able to log in, start up the Open Core Legacy Patcher application and then click install root patches and then you wanna be able to revert the root patches. It should then revert the root patches, reboot, and you should be able to boot in the operating system. But in a lot of the examples that we're seeing here, that doesn't work because we can't even get to the operating system and the safe mode is not even working. So that's where we gotta go into step two and go into Mac OS recovery to be able to revert the root patches. And then there's our EFI boot menu. So what we're gonna do is hit enter on EFI boot. And when we get to this screen, hit the space bar. Then we'll see our selection menu. We are going to go to 14.1 Mac OS recovery. Once we click that, give it a second and we should see a progress bar and we should be able to boot into recovery. And we're gonna run these commands. We've run these before in previous videos when we've had problems with the root patches. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the Macintosh hard drive. And then we are going to bless the previous snapshot that was used and taken before we applied the root patches. Okay, now that we're in macOS recovery, we need to be able to get the name of your drive. Click on disk utility here and then click continue and then you'll see the name of your drive and what you named it right here in the upper left-hand corner. The default installation is Macintosh space hard drive, but you could have called it Mac or HD or Untitled or whatever you did. That's okay, but you need to know what this name is. Now that we know the name, we can click Disk Utility and quit. Now we're going to click Utilities and go to Terminal. And what we have to do is we have to mount the Macintosh hard drive to be able to write to it. So we're gonna type these commands in the lower right-hand corner. We're gonna do mount space dash UW space quote forward slash capital V O L and then you can hit the tab key to autocomplete and you'll see that autocompleted plus another forward slash and then capital M A C and then hit the tab key to autocomplete again and then do an end quote, enter. Now the drive is mounted and we can write to it. Now what we have to do is we have to bless and boot to the last sealed snapshot that we created before we modified it and attempted to install the root patches that did not work properly. So we're gonna do bless space dash dash mount and then space and then quote forward slash again volumes autocomplete again and then Macintosh hard drive, auto, auto complete again, end quote, and then dash dash, boot, EFI, space, dash dash, last, dash, sealed, dash, snapshot. Enter. Done. 
now we're ready to reboot. What this has done now is mounted that previous snapshot that is unmodified after the 14.1 install. It will not have the root patches installed. It will be a fresh installation of the 14.1 update. Now we can close the terminal and then we can reboot this Mac. Apple to restart. Now, since the default hard drive is the OpenCore EFI and then the Mac OS Sonoma, it should just boot properly back into the operating system. Now we can see if we can attempt a repair here. There we go. And it's going to automatically select Mac OS Sonoma. And there, hey, we got a boot progress bar. That's already a good sign. Now keep in mind, you can normally boot back into the system and hold down the shift key to boot into safe mode. But in this particular case, it did not work for this 2017 Mac Pro, MacBook Pro. So now we're at the login window here and let's see if we can log in. Okay, we are back into the operating system. Now the system is a little bit unstable. It would not even load over the capture card over HDMI. So what I did was, is I connected over ethernet with an ethernet dongle and I'm connected over screen sharing to the machine so you can see what's going on. But I wanted to make sure I got the automatic root patcher to load like this first so you can see what happened before I connected to the network. Because it's basically saying the automatic root patcher has come up, which it should after we do an update. And it's saying that the root patches are, are not on there. We need to apply them, but there's a problem here. Notice this. Warning, we are unable to verify whether any new releases of OpenCore Legacy Patcher are on GitHub. Be aware that you may be using an outdated version for this OS. And if you're unsure, verify on GitHub that OpenCore Legacy Patch 1.1.0 is the latest version. We know it is, so we're okay there. But the problem is, is if we click OK, it's going to attempt to reach out and grab the latest KDK. And it's not going to be able to do that because we have no Wi-Fi. And normally in this situation, there's a system that will put at least basic Wi-Fi to be able to get internet access, but that's not working right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to click cancel on this and we're going to open up the app manually. Now we have internet access. So we should be able to go to post root install patches here. And now it's showing that we can start root patching. So we're going to click on root patching here. We're going to relaunch it as root. We're going to type in our password. And there's our KDK 23B74 for 14.1. Now keep in mind, the 14.0 KDK with those drivers should work okay because usually are very close to the version. But in this case, maybe that's part of the problem or that could have been some of the issues with the root patches. So we are going to let this KDK download and install properly over ethernet because we don't have Wi-Fi and see if that fixes our issue. Now, keep in mind when I did my 14.1 video and I did it with the Mac Pro, I was using Ethernet. I was not using Wi-Fi. So let's see. There it is. It's installing the KDK package now. And then we're going to see if that's able to install those drivers and see if we can come back up here. So back to the Mac Pro installation when I did my demo. I was able to get the KDK to download over Ethernet and it was not using Wi-Fi. So that's an interesting situation. So I think in the next demos that I do in the future, I'm going to always default to Wi-Fi because most people are going to be doing the patches over Wi-Fi and not Ethernet. So we'll give this a second here. And if this works, I will show you how to download manually the KDK and copy it over if you need to, because you might not have an Ethernet dongle to be able to do this. And you might have to wait until a newer version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher comes out to be able to fix this issue. There we go. And we can see the 14.1 is installed here and now it's doing a merge. Now it's going to rebuild the kernel cache and then we'll be able to reboot. Okay, we got a reboot and we'll click on restart. If I menu, I see Macintosh hard drive and we've got a progress bar. I think we're out of the, the clear here. So it's going to boot up here. We'll wait for it to reconnect. All right, we are back in. And as you can see here, we have our Wi-Fi back, we're connected, our Bluetooth is good, and we are back to booting. Uh, let's check our touch bar, making sure we got our touch bar here. And I showed you how to do that in the previous video. You can go down here to the accessibility section, and then you can turn on the 
switch control, turn it on, and we'll be able to see our touch bar system. There's a touch bar. We are looking good. Let's make sure that our touch ID is good also. We've got a fingerprint here. Let's lock the window, lock, and touch ID works, great. Okay, so this is this looks like what our issue is, and we are back and running. But now let's talk about what we can do if you do not have the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet dongle to be able to get those KDK when you're trying to install the root patches. So I'm going to bring you to the link to be able to download that manually now. Okay, we're back up with a different machine here. We've got our MacBook Pro 17 inch late 2011. And this is the message again that you're gonna get if you don't have your Wi-Fi working, which is the situation that we're in right now. I made sure I connected the ethernet after this message came up so we wouldn't get a proper message, which would have worked fine because it would have been able to download the KDK. Now, if you don't have an Ethernet port like the 2011 MacBook Pro and you don't have an Ethernet USB-C dongle for the newer Macs or a Thunderbolt dong dongle for the Retina MacBook Pros, you're going to be in a pretty weird crunch, right? So you need to get that KDK package. So what we can do is if you have another Mac or another machine, you can pull that file. So let me show you where that link is. Now, McCullough put this really nice GitHub URL here so you can get the manual KDK download. So I'm going to put this in the link in the description so you can be able to go to this URL. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the kernel debug kit 14.1 build 23B74. Click on that assets here and we'll be able to download the DMG. So you would be doing this on another machine right now um, to be able to transfer this over. And then all you'll need to do is move it to a USB drive or a USB flash drive and move it over here and copy it to the desktop. So once that's done, we're gonna be able to manually install the KDK and then run the patcher from this screen because it should find that KDK and be able to install it. So we'll give this time here to finish downloading. Okay, we'll open up the download and unpack the DMG and we can install the kernel debug kit package. Continue, continue, and continue. Agree, install, password. Now what this is doing is installing all of the drivers that we're going to need to be able to merge them into the snapshot that we're going to create. Great, the installation was successful. The KDK is installed into the library developer KDKs folder. And you can see the package was even stored in there and it's cached now just in case there's a problem. And you can see the previous 14.0 folder in there that sometimes gets damaged when an update happens or actually files were removed from this folder and that causes problems. But now we've got the fresh 14.1 KDK here, so we should be able to walk through this automatic patcher now. So now we're gonna click on okay, and then we're gonna type in our password and move this window out of the way. And look at that, it found the KDK 14.1 KDK already in there in the library developer 14.1 folder, and now it's merging with the word with the root volume, just like it did when we pulled it from Ethernet when we were able to reach the network and it was able to download. So it should be installing all the drivers needed for this 2011 MacBook Pro. And there we go, we're rebuilding right now. Okay, complete. Now we can reboot and restart. There it goes, there's a chime. Now the way this 2011 was booting, it was not a black screen. It was the Apple logo with no progress bar. This, so this was a little bit different from the 2017 MacBook Pro. Okay, we're booting up here. We got a progress bar. This is looking good so far. All right, back at the login window. We are looking great. Let's log in. 
excellent we are back in everything is running very well here we've got our Wi-Fi back we are back in business okay so that is the issue with our Max it need a kernel debug kit at least we got that fixed this is this is the difficult part right all the testing was looking good and then Apple dropped a new build version that was not RC today so Apple is changing things so fast on the fly, it's extremely hard to catch up. And you have to understand of uh, all the work that the developers are doing here to try to keep up with a large group of professional developers running in a huge operating system. So that's why they have said in the GitHub that try to keep the expectations here a little clear that they're doing the best they can, but things are changing so fast. So even with the update for open core yesterday, some of the things might not be able to be caught in time and they have to be developed and fixed and then a new fix will be released. So, so far at this point, at least we're back up and running. If you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the comments or you can go onto the discord, but this is the situation as we're standing right now on uh, early morning on October 26th, when if a new version of open core legacy Patrick comes out, um, that fixes it, I'll put it out there. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do with my current footage with all the testing because we're kind of in this weird flux. So we'll just kind of see how this goes for now. So let me know, did you have this issue? Did it fix it for you? And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.